Hey guys, how's it going? This is Container Inspiration Part 2, where we take a look at some of your containers that did really well for you, that you really enjoyed. Part 1 of this video went out maybe a little over two weeks ago, and we were able to take a look at 15 of your containers in that uh, video, and it was so inspiring and so much fun, and I'm hoping to take a look at at least that many in this one. So I'm just gonna jump right in. The first submission is from Sarah in Pennsylvania, Zone 6A. And oh my goodness, is this not the most glorious planter ever? Look at that! That looks like, is that a toucan? Okay, so I'm gonna look at Sarah's notes. She said the plants used here are the toucan dark orange, which she said absolutely turned out to be dark pink, but that's a kind of a happy, a happy little uh, change there. I think orange would have been beautiful, but I'm such a pink fan that that really is striking to me. There's a uh, Tratoscantia, Zebrina, and Angelonia. What a beautiful blend of plants. You've got the bold leaves, you've got the more fine texture down below, and then the beautiful color play between the blue Angelonia blooms and the purple in the Tratoscantia. Mm. A uh, fertilizer was Jack's Classic all purpose uh, on a weekly basis. It was watered daily, usually five or six gallons of water. It receives morning shade and full afternoon sun. This is the planter in the center of our town park, which I have planted and maintained the last two years. Well, Sarah, they are lucky to have you. You did a beautiful job. Oh my goodness. The next one is from Nina in Troy, United States Zone 6A. So this is a railing planter. Uh, with two Supertunia Snowdrift and one Superbina Whiteout. So it's 24 inches long, 10 inches deep. Boy, that is gorgeous. I mean, two different kinds of flowers, both white, but there's so much textural difference in the structure of the flower. That is just fabulous. So weekly uh, fertilizer with water-soluble fertilizer. It's watered on a daily basis. She said she was trying to achieve a moon garden vibe on her back porch, which was inspired by Laura's moon garden from the other year. Oh my goodness. I think I might need to try that combination somewhere. Wouldn't that look beautiful with like something ferny or like a, like a fern spray cypress, the deep green as a centerpiece? Mm. Ooh, we get a before and after on this next one. So check out this first picture. This is from Omar in Tucson, Arizona, zone 9B. So this is a six foot long by four foot deep planter. And there is hot pink gara. You can kind of see in the center there. Powis Castle Artemisia, which is the um, more fine textured blue right toward the center around the gara. There's Dusty Miller, which are the four. So two on either side. They're kind of a little bit more silvery blue. Burgundy Leaf Celosia with the red blooms there, Ultraviolet Verbena, uh, which is the purple, White Profusion Xenia, Black Heart Potato Vine. So Osmocote fertilizer once per month, the heat makes it last for, that, for them. Um, and look at this after picture. Oh my goodness. And you don't even think of the Dusty Miller as being a color addition in terms of bloom, but you can see the yellow blooms on either side and how um, they have added that, that pop on the, the sides. That is just absolutely beautiful. Omar said, I love playing with foliage colors and textures. I put together a moody arrangement that played on dark and light tones. I got so many compliments on it. Of course, Ipamia takes over, so weekly whacking is a must, uh, but they all held their own all season long, long April through October for us. Uh, which is just amazing. That's a really fun combination. Next, we have Sarah in Cleveland, Ohio, zone six. And we've, oh, we've got a window box here. Okay, there's that truffle of pink gonfrina as the backdrop, which looks gorgeous with the sage green. Both of these look gorgeous with the color of your shutters. That pink with the sage green and then supertunia honey down below. Oh, that's a beautiful blend. West facing, full sun after 2 p.m., watered with a drip system daily. Uh, the window boxes are four feet long and 10 inches deep, so there's another one. Hang on, okay. We've got what looks to be, uh, what is that? Is that like a Nemesia? Anyway, uh, there's a pink petunia, a Silver Falls, Dichondra, Dusty Miller, and Geranium. That is beautiful and striking. Next is from Laurel in St. Paul, Minnesota, zone 4B. And, oh, it looks like she sent us a video. Oh, how fun. We get to take a little tour. So a lot of containers. Oh, wow. Wow, look at that coleus. Is that a Sedona? And then uh, apricot colored begonia, white caladiums. That is a huge mixture of color and texture right there. Looks like Ooh, lots of coleus, lots of ipomia, 
And Laurel says that her space is small, but color is big. I use a mix of large and small pots, and eventually the plants grow together, making it look like a wall of color. It's a great privacy screen and oasis for summer evenings. Oh, I see a vermilionaire in there, but the hummingbirds love that, and some salvia. I'm gonna have to watch this one over a few times. Oh, there's an ornamental cabbage in there, how fun. Plectranthus there, and an impatient on the table. So she fertilizes every other week, and this is a full depart sun area, and she waters daily by hand. Whoa. That is commitment laurel, and it's gorgeous. Oh, there's a canna. Oh, and there's some plum dandy, alternanthera. See that purple leaf right in there? I love it. Next is Nicholas in Connecticut, zone 7A. Oh, good, we have a hanging basket. Ooh. Okay, so that's a chocolate drop coleus, an ipomea, and... What is the Arachapocal Impatient? There's one of each in this hanging basket. Whoa. Oh, that's one that I would want to do in my window boxes because you've got the beautiful bloom color and you've got such interesting but contrasting color in your leaves. Oh, I love that. So I uh, fertilize weekly with water soluble fertilizer. It's in mostly shade. Waters every day as the cocoa fiber does dry out quickly. Yes, that tends to happen. But boy, you're taking, or you took really good care of that. Absolutely gorgeous. I wish we were looking out at things like that right now. <laughs> this is feeding my soul, looking at all these beauties. Next is from Sarah in Alberta, Canada, zone 3B. <gasps> Woo, look at that. Oh, that's a raised bed container right there and it's full and gorgeous. So the plants in here, there's a castor bean. Uh, you can see that kind of towering above the whole, the whole rest of the, the display. It's got the more uh, fan-shaped, I don't know how to, are they fan-shaped leaves? They're really interesting. I've grown castor beans before. They grow so fast and they're such great plants. Um, bronze leaf cannas, there are nine of those in there. Oh, this is a four by eight foot raised bed, by the way. So one castor bean, nine bronze leaf cannas, uh, four play in the blue salvia, four pink begonias, four coleus, four prince tut grasses, which is a really, like you don't notice the prince tut a ton, but when you start looking at it, it does provide some textural, like some softness down in there. You can see it kind of by the cannas and the salvia there. Uh, 14 super tunia honey. Yes, that's a beautiful tropical. Sarah said, I had wanted a tropical look and I think I achieved it. Yep, I think you did. Great job. I battled aphids badly though on those petunias this year and I don't know if I will repeat them. I may do a border of pink sun or shade begonias instead next year. The castor bean and cannas topped out at eight foot, eight feet or more, just huge. It was a dramatic look and I really enjoyed it. The hummingbirds even found my salvia. We don't get many for, uh, for long this far north. So I loved that. Absolutely gorgeous, Sarah. I look at that and I'm thinking, what can I do like that down at the college? We are planting down at the college again this year and they have a few big planter beds like that. And that is, that is the look that you want. It, you know, very striking and eye-catching in areas like that. Next is from Sindori in Hillsborough Township, United States Zone 6B. Oh, that's a sweet little planter right there. So it looks like there's a zonal geranium and peachy keen verbena. I love the fact that in that peachy keen verbena, you get a little of that punchy kind of reddish color. So it ties the two of them together. And I think the peachy keen kind of softens the geranium in a way, but I think the way you paired it in that container, kind of that, it's like a gray blue color. It really just like brought it all together. And even the terracotta pot feet underneath the container really add to uh, the look. So uh, this is a fiber clay with drainage container, 12 inches in diameter, only eight inches tall. Uh, fertilized just four times between May and September. It's in full sun and water daily or as needed. Oh, we get a before and after for this next one too. So this is from Tanya in Alabama, zone eight. So this container is next to the post that has their house numbers it looks like, then they match each other, which is nice. So this container has a uh, play in the blue salvia, Supertunia Vista bubblegum, and then uh, she said that she started out, and you can see it, the white night lobularia and a super tunia limoncello, but the bubble gum choked them out. Let's take a look at the after. Yep, <laughs> that's what bubble gum does. I've kind of learned that through the years. However, I think you pairing it with white night lobularia was an interesting test because lobularia in that line, the white night, blushing princess, violet night, all of those are incredibly robust 
plants. Um, they usually can hold their own even up against a supertunia, but maybe not a bubblegum or a white um, snowdrift. Those two are just like, ugh, they will just look gorgeous, um, but they will take over the land <laughs> if, if they have the opportunity. Um, so it was it, beautiful to start off with, and then you just get a different look in the end. The Plain the Blues grew beautifully huge, gorgeous centerpiece plant, beautiful blue, purple blooms, and then the pink down below. So this is a 24 inch container, um, watered, uh, fertilized weekly rather, with Proven Winters Water Soluble uh, Fertilizer, and it's watered daily, it gets midday and afternoon sun. I love it. That is, those are my colors right there, pink and purple. Next one is from Mark in Richmond, Kentucky, zone 6B. <gasps> Oh, is that a Chinook Caladium? Oh, it's a Tickle Me Pink. It looks a lot like Chinook, which is my favorite. This one I would use interchangeably with it. They have kind of that salmon-y pink interior with the green margins, a little bit of cream in there. Dichondra Silver Falls, that is absolutely gorgeous. This is another one that I would do in kind of a part sun, part shade kind of situation. Absolutely beautiful, bi-weekly fertilizer. Um, and the notes Mark left was, I'm a relatively new YouTuber with a channel called Antique and Garden Sh Showcase. Antique and Garden Showcase. My goal has been to acquire antique containers for my garden, work those into my landscape, and come up with, a different, with different combinations for spectacular displays. I am in Kentucky, which is similar to your climate with the exception of humidity and lots of it. Sometimes torrential rain, which is often, oftentimes followed by a period of drought and we get some nasty windstorms too. Last year, I set up all of my vintage antique containers on drip for the first time. It was a game changer. Absolutely gorgeous, Mark, and I'm excited to check out your channel. How fun. The next one is from Maureen in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, Zone 5. Oh, look at those. Oh, those are striking, and the centerpieces are obelisks with, um, or trellises, whatever you want to call them, with um, Morning Glory. That's such a wonderful idea. I've grown Morning Glory, but usually on like a fence or a huge obelisk, obelisk or something like that out in the uh, vegetable garden. But using them as a centerpiece is such a wonderful idea and they usually grow so well for many of us. So this is a variety, Maureen says it's Grandpa Ott. There are two in each container and there are also two geraniums. You can see the red, big red blooms popping through. Uh, one super, one super tunia Bordeaux, that's it, in each container, dang and one Silver Falls Dichondra, which you can see that silvery blue cascading down the front. So these containers are 20 inches tall and 20 inches wide at the top, planted with biotone and fertilized every three to four weeks. They're in full sun and watered with a drip system daily. Those are gorgeous. Next is from Tanner in Alabama, zone 8A. Oh, more caladiums. This is a Proven Winners variety, he said. I don't know what name it is, but oh, that's a beautiful one. And perfect pairing with what you've got in the rest of the pot. So there's Super Bell's Strawberry Punch and then a couple of begonias. It looks like, um, I don't know if it, it's not a double up, is it? It's just a white wax begonia and a pink one. But it, those colors are beautiful all together. And the fact that they're all thriving together so well being a little bit different, like caladiums like to be really moist, super bells do not like to usually be very moist, and begonias kind of like to be on the drier side too. So the fact that everything is thriving, you must have like the perfect touch taking care of this one. So in full sun, dang, full sun. 15 inch container, watered daily in the morning with a drip system, and it's just thriving there. Really pretty, great pairing. Next is Lena in Colorado zone five. Oh, look at the coleus. Dang. So there's a palm centerpiece, a huge coleus, begonia, sun patience, and a terenia, and a vinca. See that? So there's terenia has the purple blooms, the wishbone flower down there, purple white bicolor blooms, and then right in the center you can see the variegated yellow and green. That's a variegated vinca, which uh, mirrors beautifully the yellow in the coleus. I think it kind of draws your eye down puts them together. You've got the begonias coming out the side, the sun patients in the front, and I want to know what variety of coleus that is. Because that is like electric, beautiful. Fertilized weekly, alternating between an organic liquid fertilizer and the proven winners variety. Several, several hours of morning sun and then shaded for the rest of the day. I created and maintained this container for one of my gardening climates, clients. <laughs> Climates, clients, said Lena. Oh, awesome. Next is Alfea in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada, zone 8B. Oh, how fun is this? Look at that black-eyed Susan vine. 
It's a um, Thimbergia lemon appeal that's growing and kind of like training itself around the door in the house number. And that yellow color is beautiful. The yellow bloom is beautiful up, up against the gray or black um, siding right there. That is so pretty. And then Golden Dreams Coleus uh, looks like a Superbina Peachy Keen. And then there's a Fuchsia in there as well. Oh, that's a beautiful mix. And growing your vine, so having it up close to a structure and growing your vine in a way that it can use, you know, scramble up the structure rather than needing to utilize some kind of a trellis or stakes or whatever in your container. That's really interesting. So this is a 12 by 12 inch square container. That is not very big to have all of those things doing so well in it. Fertilized on a weekly basis, it's in the shade, only getting one hour of late evening sun and watered every other day. That's an idea for the cut flower garden right there. Planting something that can go up over the doors from a container rather than needing to be in the ground. Next is from Cindy in Lansing, Michigan, zone 5B. Oh, a tabletop display, look at that. Oh, that's a beautiful Super Bells. Oh my goodness. So an asparagus fern in the center and the variety of Super Bells is double orchid. It's a 12 inch pot that is fertilized on a weekly basis, morning sun and watered every day. I want that on my tabletop. Beautiful. Great idea to use the asparagus fern in there too. Next is Hannah from Longmeadow, Massachusetts, zone six. Oh my goodness. Oh, little cutie standing there on the ground next to it. Kind of gives you an idea of scale though. So seven foot long window box that's eight and a half inches deep, seven and a half inches like planting space this way. Um, three lobularia. So those are the three white bloomers kind of trailing down in the front. Four purple sweet potato vines that look kind of like the sweet Caroline jet black that have the heart shaped leaves. There are five redhead coleus and seven big pink green leaf begonias. Holy moly. I'd like to know at what point in the season this picture was taken and what it looked like at the very end. Because I'm guessing you probably got more drape out of some of the plants, unless you kept them all trimmed up. But they are like intermixing beautifully on top and it's just such a gorgeous display. And it looks really pretty too with your dark shutters and then the dark colored potato vine. And then really the mirror of the boxwood color with the uh, leaf color of the begonia. So for uh, fertilized weekly with a water soluble fertilizer, this is north facing with two hours of filtered sun and watered every other day as needed. Beautiful job, Hannah. Next is Felix in Germany, zone 7A. Oh, there's a Prince Tut or a, some type of a cypress grass there. Looks kind of like a Prince or even maybe a King Tut because you've got some really robust looking stems and it looks so healthy. Every time I try to grow a tut, it gets burned ends. I'm gonna have to figure out something. They're kind of a, a water loving grass. And I think I need to really focus in on that and really give them a ton of water to keep them real happy here in our dry high desert. But yours looks gorgeous. Down below, there are three petunias. Looks like doubles, uh, one sweet potato vine. Oh, I like the mix of the yellow and the pink with the bright chartreuse, but then the whole surrounding area. I mean, if you look beyond it, you see the beautiful wreath on the brick fireplace. And then in front, you see some beautiful potted things, colorful. And then in front of this container, there's some salvia and some a mirror of the yellow um, super bells that are in there. Absolutely stunning. Uh, fertilized every week and watered daily. Next is Tanya in Warsaw, Indiana, zone 5B. Whoa, that's a lot of color. Look at that. So centerpiece, we have some kind of annual salvia. That's a blue suede shoe salvia there. Beautiful growth on that and color. There are some uh, pink snapdragons right below the salvia. And then down below the big poof of color, that's Supertunia Vista Fuchsia, Supertunia Vista Silverberry, and Supertunia Bordeaux, which I do not see. I wonder if the Vista's kind of gobbled up the Bordeaux there. Really gorgeous though. Either way, all that color and healthy growth. Amazing. Oh, look at this tropical combination. <gasps> so we've got a hibiscus in the center. Uh, there's no variety name included, dang it. That's such a beauty, that kind of peachy pink orange in the center, like a sunset. And then it goes out to the yellow. That's absolutely fantastic. And you can see it's loaded with buds. So there's blooms around the exterior, but look at the middle there. 
So loaded with buds, it looks super healthy, nice glossy, clean leaves. And then down below, Impatience in like electric pink and a bright orange. That is perfect with that hibiscus. So this one gets about six to seven hours of sun per day and it's fertilized on a weekly schedule. Next is Chris in Indiana Zone 6A. Oh, that's such a soft, beautiful combination. That's a Samantha Grace combination right there. You know, before we had Samantha, I thought I probably won't dress her in very much pink. I'll do a lot of like, I don't know, maybe more neutral colors. And she's always in pink, everyday pink. Pink is her color. And this is like her color of pink right here. Pink gem caladium in the center and then pink begonias or pink impatience rather all the way around. Beautiful. And I like where you have it too, because you can see right behind the bold hosta, you can see that teal or yeah, kind of like a teal blue bird bath. And that color looks so good with this color of pink. I really, really love this. So it's an 18 inch container. Um, Biotone was added into the soil when the initially planted and then no ongoing fertilizer after that. It gets early morning sun and then shade throughout the rest of the day and water only is needed. They stay pretty moist in the shade, which is actually even true of our containers here. There are many days where I can actually skip window boxes and things up against the house because they just stay moist uh, longer than the rest of them do. Next is Jessica in Minnesota zone 4B. Oh, we have another moon garden combination here. So there's a caladium in the center that looks very happy. This is a white wonder caladium. There's a diamond, white diamond euphorbia, and then the silver falls dichondra. And this container is only 12 inches in diameter. That's so amazing to me when I see these huge flower displays and you imagine that the opening for planting is only this big. It gets morning sun, then shaded through the rest of the day and a weekly fertilizer. It looks very, very happy right there. Next is Kelly in Nebraska zone four. Oh, look at these. Oh, a lot of begonias, impatience. Again, some more of the Silver Falls Dichondra. You guys, like Silver Falls Dichondra, you'll notice on the tag says full sun, but I see them used so often in part, part sun and shady locations mixed in with things like this. And they always seem to look pretty darn good. I think they're more versatile than maybe the tag makes them seem. Uh, but this is a Rockapoco Apple Blossom Double Impatient, Rockapoco Double Rose Double Impatient, and Nonstop Begonias. So you can see the Apple Blossom Double Impatient to the left there. It's got kind of more of that orchid pink color. Um, and then the Rose Double Impatient are the more uh, vibrant pink on the right hand side. And then the Double Nonstop Begonias are like the bigger flowers there. Uh, so every two to four weeks, fertilizer with Super Thrive. It's in the shade and watered with a drip system gorgeous next is tracy in georgia zone 7b oh look at that hydrangea oh that's beautiful so we've got a fern in there uh we've got it's called a bloomstruck hydrangea that's the name of it i love the color of those blooms you can see like the tiniest bit of periwinkle toward the back and then chartreuse green cream and lavender mm. you can see there's new buds getting ready to bloom there and then ivy and creeping jenny out the front so this is a 14 inch container. Uh, it's fertilized every week with Neptune's harvest dish and seaweed fertilizer. Um, is that right? Harvest dish and seaweed fertilizer. I've actually not heard of that one. Um, and it's in the shade. I got to use more ferns and containers this year. I say I'm going to do it every year and I never seem to like find the right ferns at the right time. I need to like get them ordered and sent at the right time. And next is from M in Dellinson, New York, zone 5A. And I hope that it's okay that I call you by your first initial because um, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Uh, spelling is M-B-A-L-O-G. That's how it came through. So uh, anyway, beautiful combination of plants here. We've got a red, red spike dracaena as a, kind of the centerpiece, but kind of not. There's the dipped in wine coleus that really, I mean, that's what your eye goes to, right? First of all, I mean, it just goes to that super bright, Eye, like the bright interior of that coleus. And then the Dracaena is almost kind of a grassy accent there. And then you can see a Sedona coleus tucked in toward the back, right by the spike. And then Tangerine Punch Super Bells trailing in the front. The color of the pot is perfect for this combination. So when M planted this, I uh, used Jack's Bloom Booster water soluble fertilizer every one to two weeks when they planted and then every one to two weeks after. Um, so comments were using more plants per pot these days, thanks to your inspiration, but save a couple to shine on their own. I plant whatever sun loving proven winners annuals catch my eye. I usually plant eight to 12 inch pots on my deck and porch. Want to try bigger ones and in groups like you did by your greenhouse. Well, you'll do a beautiful job of it. If they look anything like this one. 
And the last container we're going to look at today was submitted by Astrid in Oxford, Ohio, Zone 6A. Oh, look at that. There's a tut grass. Is that a tut grass? Let's see. Yeah, Prince tut grass, a coleus called flamethrower. Absolutely fantastic. There are three wire vines in there. And yeah, I don't see the wire vines. I think that they have been overtaken by the coleus, but the color of container you used there, beautiful. I can see the container right below it. We're got, we've got an Ipomoea and then maybe some Lantana in there, some pink and yellow Lantana. Oh, up against the, the color of your siding and the color of your door, the whole thing is just really soothing and pleasing to look at. Oh my goodness, and this container is standing next to a shed. This isn't even their home. So this container was by my new shed. My husband built this past spring. Well, good job to your husband. That is a beautiful shed. So this is a spot that's got partial shade. The containers are giving, given weekly Proven Winters Water Soluble Fertilizer. Um, and the only other comment Astrid left was I found a shallow container that could sit inside the tall ceramic pot. So I did not need to fill the container with soil. So those aren't actually even planted in that giant pot. They're planted in a smaller pot and just sat inside. What a great idea. Oh, you guys, awesome job to all of you. You have done a beautiful, beautiful thing in your spaces. And like to anybody that gets to see them, I can just imagine the joy that it brings them. I know when I walk by or drive by anybody's home where I can see that they've made an effort and they've planted some things, it just, it makes me happy. It makes me happy for their home. And you guys have all done such a beautiful job. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed part two of containers. Again, thank you to everybody who took the time to send us all this information and your pictures. We really do appreciate it a ton. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.